Hi there and welcome to the US version of the steel beam calculator. In this video I'm going to walk you through each section of the calculator and explain a few things. The calculator is really easy to use but you do need to have some understanding of steel beams and structures. Okay so the first thing to say is that the calculator is mobile responsive. Um, so it's going to work well on all your devices, PC, Mac, tablet and smartphone. Section 1 of the calculator asks for your basic beam details. So you first need to enter the span length of your beam. Okay, so let's put 9.8 feet in there. Next, we need to know the shape and size of your steel beam. So let's start with shape. The calculator defaults to W beams, but you can choose S beams or American Standard Channels instead. If you're not sure of the difference, here's a quick summary. W beams and S beams both have um, this distinctive eye shape, but the flanges on a W beam are wider and their sides are parallel, whereas on an S beam the flanges are tapered. American standard channels are quite different, they're a C shape. Once you've chosen the right shape of beam, you don't need to worry about choosing an exact beam size right now. Our tool is pretty clever. It will calculate what beam sizes would be suitable based on the loads you're about to enter. Um, and what I mean by suitable is that it will actually calculate to the American Institute of Steel Construction's allowable stress design, the ninth edition. However, if you do know your beam size already and you want to specify that now, you can do. So you just tick this uh, option here, select a specific steel beam and then choose a shape and a size from the drop-down. Next, you need to choose the minimum yield stress for your beam. This is an indicator of the strength of the beam. So if it's an old beam, um, you can choose 36,000 PSI. Um, if it's a new beam, you want to choose 50,000 PSI. The next section is all about the loads that your beam will be supporting, and there are three load types. Uniformly distributed load, that's where the load is um, evenly distributed across the full length of the beam. So, for example, an attic or a floor. Partial uniformly distributed load, as the name suggests, is where the load is evenly distributed across part of the beam. And a point load is where there are localised loads at certain points along the beam. So, for example, when you're using a steel beam to support another steel beam. If you choose either uniformly distributed load or partial uniformly distributed load. We've already entered a lot of typical scenarios in a drop-down menu to make your life easier. So here we can see various different roofs, walls and so on. Uh, if you choose one of these, so let's go for this one, you'll see that the dead loads and the live loads are automatically populated, but you can change these if you need to just by using the up and down arrows or overtyping. Just to recap, dead loads are usually things that don't change, like the weight of a wall or the floor, whereas live loads do change, so for example, people or furniture. Okay, so next you need to enter the tributary width of the load in feet. Let's do that here. Or if your load is a wall, so let's look at that, it will ask you for the height of the wall. By the way, if you're not sure, the tributary width of the load is always half the distance between the beam and the next support in both directions. There's actually a diagram of that on our example page, which makes it a bit clearer. OK, so if you can't see the option in the drop-down menu that describes your load, you can use Other, which is at the bottom. And then you can enter a name for that load and amend the dead load and live load accordingly. Just a note, you don't need to add the weight of the steel beam itself because the calculator automatically allows for that. Now I should also say that you can add multiple loads. Just click the add another load button here. So we've talked about uniformly distributed loads and partial uniformly distributed loads, but what about point loads? Okay, so for point loads you'll need to enter the distance in feet between the point load and the rest of the beam as well as the dead and live loads. And finally, give this point load a name. Right, next, 
For section 3, you need to confirm that the top flange of your beam will be laterally braced along its full length. That means it will have regularly spaced fastenings at least every 2 feet. If that isn't the case, select No, and then you'll see this extra field pop out. And this asks you for the maximum length between braces. The last section of the calculator is about deflection limits. A deflection limit is the maximum amount you allow the beam to sag. Our calculator defaults to recommended limits, but you can change these. So, for example, if you are using the beam to span above bifold doors, you may need to set a live load deflection limit that's lower than the default. So we'll do that here. We recommend that the total live and dead load deflection limit isn't greater than the span length divided by 240. And that's all the information we need. So now you just have to press the run calculation button. And if you left it up to the calculator workout beam sizes for you, you will now see a list that are safe to use for your project. So if you choose one from the list, so let's go for this one, and then your report will appear in a matter of seconds. And you can download it here as a PDF. So we're done. Hopefully this video has given you an insight into how the steel beam calculator works and what you need to know before using it. Thanks for watching.